kandi ubuzima bwawe ni wowe nyine uzabugiramo uruhare ka wundi muntu wabugiramo uruhare utateye intambwe ngo jahuri te ntango gere na wahugera cyo gihe rero yibashiye kubisohora hari imbaraga urasenyuka umesi ya mbere urasenyuka ukababara ukabira ukagira gute ariko aho ni watuvuma imbaraga zo kwimaka Rwandans overall are very strong and resilient. And the women in particular for whom we've provided treatment for HIV are particularly so. What I find most rewarding is uh, one, knowing that the women who would not have lived are living, and the one-on-one -on -one connection with each of the women. Coming to Rwanda and meeting these women changed my life. Genova <laughs> kabari kintu cyagiye kidubabaza cyane bitewe ngo no bwoko dukomokamo during the genocide they were rwandans who were killing other rwandans means hutus killed tutsis it is a long uh, a long history but it happened for example you are my neighbor we grown together and at the moment, you decide to end my life. So it was, uh, even today, it is very difficult to understand that. genocide <laughs> Ugasanga <laughs> In late 2003, I was contacted by a reporter, Anne Christine Dedeski, who had forwarded to me an email that came from a women's organization in Rwanda called the Vega, which stands for the Association of Widows of the Genocide. And they were writing, asking for help in accessing treatment for HIV. The women had just found out that the perpetrators of genocidal rape were at the criminal court in Arusha. And that because they were under international law there, they were able to receive treatment for their HIV. It turns out Rwanda at that time was developing its antiretroviral treatment program. And Rwanda now has one of the best treatment programs in the world 
But the women couldn't see it yet. And so the women were outraged that these perpetrators were now able to get treated for their HIV, and they were not. It was in 2004 when Dr. Catherine Anastos, Dr. Madge Cohen, both medical doctors and fighters against HIV, come in Rwanda, accompanied by um, Anne Christine Dadeski. So that what the women said to us was, we need to be treated, we're dying. And they were dying. As I was walking out, one of the women came up to me. She said, you know, a lot of people come and visit, and nobody comes back. And it may be that conversation that led me to think, I have to come back. They said, no, we have to do something to help run the government to overcome all those problems. There was barrier after barrier to trying to make a program happen, something that actually delivered care. What am I gonna go say, oh, it's too hard? You know, it's too hard for me to keep going? No. So you just regroup and you keep going, right? And this is how they formed the clinic for people living with HIV. So we act which stands for Women's Equity and Access to Care and Treatment, was the organization that we founded. We hired Chantal Benekagheri as one of our very first research nurses in 2005. And now Chantal is the director of WE ACT. WE ACT is now a locally run organization, which was always our goal. <laughs> Nonva, <laughs> So, the first thing that women asked for when they were a little better, they asked us to test their children and to treat their children for HIV if they had it, which we did. And then they had other requests that were not, not really in my wheelhouse. Please help my children go to school. Please help us find a way to earn a living. We started a sewing cooperative. So this is how Inez was born. Inez. In, in English, it is um, kindness, goodness, yes, Inez. Yeah. Mary is a special person. Mary really uh, changed in the lapse of time. She changed so much. Mary showed us a strong leadership, and today she's leading this group. By selling those products, they can, for example, rent their houses. They can feed their children. They can pay school fees for their children. Akeju sanga, mumadamia arakubiri ati 
iyo ndwaza niba yarabutse akaba ni aravuye we integrated the psychosocial component to help those people who have been raped to overcome their stress and uh, traumatism. Because even today, their children are asking, where is my father? So the mama have no response. It is a permanent stress, it is a permanent trauma and we help them and their children to manage those situation. Yoga ni sport. Sporto dukora ikadufasha uba relax kwisanzura kugira imitekerereze myiza kwishima eh no kuduhuza muri rusange tukarushaho gukundana wa muti wo mu mubiri bisanzwe wa muti wo mitekerereze those kind of program are very important they help them to have confidence in themselves eh, to understand that they can do something and something better which can change the world yes So as we were developing care, uh, we asked the women if they thought we should do research. And the women almost visibly startled. And they said, well, yeah, you should do research. How are you going to know what happens to us if you don't do research? So we started a research program in addition. So my research focuses in two main areas. One is HIV infection, and the other area is cervical cancer. When we started doing cervical cancer research in Rwanda, there were only two pathologists in the country. Rwandans genocide, they lost a lot of their highly educated people. I would project that we would probably have to increase the time, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So both because of the need for clinical care and because we couldn't have the pathology done locally, we invested pretty significantly in training pathologists. It's gone up to six slides, yeah. Gad Marenzi is a Rwandan physician who leads the research program in Rwanda. He spent over a year here at Einstein in the Department of Pathology. He was training with Dr. Tiffany A. Bear who's a specialist in the pathology of women's reproductive cancers. And that was over a decade ago, and she continues to mentor him very actively. And she still participates in the research that we conduct. So you'll be able to move on with this study very soon, which is great. We're talking about it today, uh, this morning, with Kathy. So you should be good to go. It's exciting. We expect that over time, Rwandans own all the research and they own the infrastructure. And the meeting in the weekend? Yes. Yes. Went well. uh, yeah, it really went well. So it's important that we reach a time where we have developed all these skills that can allow us to be able to lead the research ourselves. Of course, we can still partner with our partners in the US and the West, but we should be able to lead these efforts. And I think that can make a very big difference because we understand the context, we know what is more important, so I believe the team is great, and I am proud of the team. So remember, one of the things the women asked for was, can you help us educate our children? And we thought a lot about, so how do you do that? Solidarity no muryango. Nyarwanda washyizweho ugamije kugira ngo ufashe abantu bari bakenye cyane 
bafite ubuzima bubi nyuma y'intambara yabaye muri 1994 nyuma genocide Kathy Jonathan baza kudusura n'umukobwa wa Rebecca baje kudusura muri association turabakira turabanezererwa hanyuma bafasha abana babo kubishyura school fees eh ubwo rero badufashije muri icyo gikorwa cyo gudufashiza abana kubaha breakfast buri gitondo byatangiye 2007 imiryango yahinduriye ubuzima kubera umuryango wa Kathy bakoze ibintu byiza imunsi twariho tubinezererwa tuvuga ibyo bikorwa bakoze imyaka 15 irangiye I feel overwhelmed with happiness and gratitude. It is in part the people, it is in part the effective government that continues to improve things for people, including the healthcare system. The formative lessons I learned from my mother include one, that if you stick to something, you can do it and that it's really our obligation in life to figure out what's the right thing to do, and then we have to do it. I chose medicine. When I was looking for a residency program, I found out about Montefiore's and Einstein's training program in social medicine, and its stated mission is to improve the health status of urban underserved people. And so that was part of why I wanted to be here. And it was inequity. It was inequity that I cared about. And then we also had floated the possibility of using some operational funds if we needed to fill in a gap that way. Kathy has really pioneered, you know, research in uh, women with HIV in the United States, and she's taken that experience and brought it to other places and tried to help build capacity in those areas across Africa. What global health really means is that something that happens in one part of the world has an impact or relevance to something that happens in another part of the world. And in some ways, that means that all health is global health, right? What you know about HIV and cervical disease in women in the Bronx tells us something about what happens to women in Africa. So the Einstein Montefiore Global Health Center sees health across the world through this prism that ultimately it's all related. Women with HIV represent half the people living with HIV across the planet, and women are deserving of the benefits of understanding more about their health. And the way that this can be done is really by including women in the design of research studies and as participants in research studies and as leaders in research by women and for women. The one big thing I still want to make happen is working with colleagues here at Einstein and in Africa to create an institute of research and education for Central Africa that has a sustainable funding source so it will keep going. And so that the work that we're laying the groundwork for now will not only continue, but will grow as more and more researchers use it, both Einstein researchers and African researchers. Some of the most important things that I've learned from Kathy are that in order to be successful, your work really has to be mission driven. And that work is always better when it's a team effort. Really, it's not about you know her own ego. It's about seeing a way to contribute and then you know, planting the seeds so that that work can continue without her. I think that's always been her, her goal, and she's been enormously successful in that.
to see you. Being a doctor is an unbelievable privilege. It's about the human connection with the patient that I could cross into their lives. In fact, I sort of had to in order to be a good doctor. What a gift that is, right? That it, to be able to have your horizons expanded by other people's experience, their joys, their sorrows, which is what I think it is to be a good primary care doctor. Let me say that during COVID, <laughs> when we act was there for you, that was Chantal. Mm -hmm. Chantal, and truthfully, all of the good work, we helped, yes, we started it, we did. But it's Rwandans who make it continue. <laughs> it's owned by Rwandans, and it's Rwandans' commitment mm -hmm. that make all of this work. Chanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanichanich